Okay, so going back to the final presentation, mark your calendars that it's going to happen on the 15th of June. So this is week 10. So next week, we have a class on Monday, and then on Wednesday is the final presentation, right? So we have three more learning sessions to that final. All right. So for the final presentation, right now, you should have an assignment to create for a website with four pages. And um, you're going to be building it from, you should have started working on this website for your last assignment, and then you have one more to include. And uh, when you're preparing, um, you're going to show a demo for the, of the presentation and keeping in mind that we are under time constraints since we have everyone to present. Um, you know, we just maybe just go over the high level details. Um, if there are any questions, if you did, so it's very common that someone will use some really interesting plugin and everyone else wants to know about it. And if we have this situation, let's just agree that the person who's who came up with a cool plugin, they're going to post it on the discussion will be available until the campus closes down and you can get the information from campus, okay? And then you also prepare a, a brief discussion, uh, what are the biggest challenges and successes for the website in terms of coding? If you have done one, if you could have done one thing differently, what would it be? To learn the three things that you learned in this class that you plan to use again in the future, if any. Okay, this one, maybe three. And you don't need to clean my bed, so don't spend your time unless you like kind of person. Mm -hmm. As long as you just have prepared your answers so you can share them without, you know, having to think about it here and take up too much time, then that's fine. And then also 25% uh, on the overall professionalism of the presentation, right? So hopefully you have everything put together and maybe you come up with a flash drive or a Google Drive and we don't have to wait for you and you know where your resources are. And you use this machine and you can use the laser pointer. Uh, the order will be by last name, alphabetical by last name, so I'll just call out. I guess Aaron, you, I don't know if you're first, but you'll be near the top, right? And um, you need to show up for the final assignment in person, obviously. So that's the one day where you need to be here. Any questions on the final? Just the same thing as our assignment eight. We just make a presentation about it. There will be more because you also have one more assignment. Uh, so we still have an assignment A, assignment nine, nine then right. presentation yes. in one week. Well, assignment eight was due tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. 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 It's on Wednesday, okay, yes. and then you have one more after that. So let's go back and look at the presentations here and the assignments. Uh, oh, actually, let me see what we have. All right, so assignment eight, you on the eighth. Uh, and this is Wednesday. I don't know why. I actually don't remember why I made it Wednesday, not Monday, but it's okay. I don't it's think the holiday. I, is anyone complaining? The holiday. That's yeah, last week was Wednesday. Okay, so that's why. All right. So for assignment day, you needed to come up with your skeleton for your website with the four pages, uh, okay. and, um, and you have a couple more days to do so. Essentially, integrate the following functionality. Please make sure that you comment exactly what you're doing, so I can find it easily because I, you know, I. If I don't find it, I'm not going to give you points for it. So actually, assignment A is a part of the yes. Yeah. It makes sense. It makes yes. sense. Right. Okay, so that's assignment eight, essentially integrating a lot of the jQuery functionality we have learned so far in a way that makes sense for your website. And you have three pages or four pages to figure out where you're going to integrate it. And then the final assignment, assignment nine, I usually have 10 assignments, but somehow we ended up with nine. Um, the, the ninth assignment, which is due on the 13th, and maybe we'll just make it the 15th. And I guess if you guys want to just make it the 15th, that's fine with me. 
Um, and then the assignment will be due on the day of the final presentation. All right. So let's change that right now. Um, okay. Okay. So assignment nine is going to be about material we're going to cover today and it has to do with adding a couple of different types of plugins to your website. Uh, I don't know if anyone of you has used jQuery UI. Uh, most students really enjoy working with it. It's very easy and you know very powerful in how easy it is to get things done. So this will be your first assignment and then the second part of the assignment will be to um, add also jQuery plugin and I will talk about it. Uh, as well. So, actually, that's probably confusing. So, I'll just say jQuery plugin. And um, the tenth assignment, which you are not going to get to do because we don't have time, has to do usually with it's an assignment to style to um, to validate your form. And we don't have that. Uh, if you want to, you can actually use a plugin to validate the form. So that's one option. But that's what we don't have. We just don't have time for it. So then we have assignment eight due on Wednesday, assignment nine due next Wednesday, and the final presentation next Wednesday as well, the 15th. Then we're done. Okay? So do you want us to, like, do you expect to form on our final project then? Because we're not going to have time to get to it. Like uh, page. Oh, well, there's so many classes. <laughs> I mean, I can, uh, if you're not using a form, if you're not using jQuery on the form, then don't worry about it. How about it? Right? Some of you may choose to validate the form with jQuery, so then if that's the case, then you should not have one, but otherwise, the form is optional. All right, fair point. Thank you. So, um, oh, yeah, you, yeah. You just want this to be straight HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, like no PHP. At all. No PHP because it's not a PHP yeah. class and I can't see what's okay. going on and just, yeah, that's a different class. Okay. okay. So did I say a form here somewhere? No. So I haven't actually said that the form okay, is required. So I, I read the assignment 10 involved the form. So we today right. going to uh, go with a plugin in jQuery. Correct. So yes, I That's know nice. that. Okay. <clears throat> So the last hands-on part of the class will be jQuery UI and plugins. And then I'm going to show you lectures on JSON and Ajax and some examples that you will not be hand coding for one. They often don't work locally without the server. And on um, and the other um, the other time we have together, uh, I'm going to show you AngularJS. And if we have more time, we'll get some other of the JavaScript. APIs that you can use, Google API with JavaScript and some other helpful um, additional tools. But after we cover plugin, this is, I, I feel like the mandatory in the other material you can get an introduction to. And then if you're taking the JavaScript um, 298, that's the place that you're going to learn more. Okay. All right. So. Let's talk about jQuery plugins and I'm, this book talks about jQuery plugins, but I actually like a different slide deck here. So I'll use this one. Okay, so what is a plugin? Power supply. <laughs> this is definitely a plugin. A plug. It's kind of the same thing, but it has to do with um, a little, like basically a segment of code that you can get from an external site that you can plug in to your code to make like a widget or a thing or a workaround. That's right. That's exactly right. And we assume that if it's a plugin, that it's written, 
reasonably simple to integrate. If it's not reasonably simple to integrate and it's more programmatically driven, then you probably are not talking about a plugin, but you're talking about an API application programming interface. So jQuery is a library built on top of JavaScript. And then in, on top of jQuery, there is a library, jQuery UI. jQuery UI is dependent on jQuery. So when you start adding your file, file links, you need to add them in a certain order. Uh, since jQuery UI is dependent on jQuery, you need to add jQuery first, the link to it. And essentially, um, jQuery UI gives you a variety of very easy to use and uh, simple widgets, as Dwayne pointed out, and also uh, interactions and drivables. We're going to look at the website in a moment. Okay, as you can see here, jQuery UI is similar to jQuery. You can download it, or you can CDN link to it. The four types of features provided by jQuery UI are widgets, themes, interactions, and effects. And one um, part one of your assignment nine homework will be to integrate. I forgot how many I said. So one or three. A few of these widgets. Yes, yeah, three. Three widgets on your website. Okay. So we'll download and look at it to see what is there. In fact, I think. Let's just go ahead and look at the website itself. There is no point to look at the slides because the website is so self-explanatory. Please go ahead and look at jQuery UI. So we have demos, which, which is where we are. You can download the jQuery files coming to the PC. Yes, yeah, so it's it's a library, so it's going to be the same processes with jQuery, right? But um, then we have the API documentation. So, for example, if you're working on a widget and uh, the basic example doesn't give you the information you need, or if you need some more advanced functionality, then you can go and look into the. Are we able to API. Link from jQuery UI, or do we have to uh, have them? You are. We just haven't gotten there yet. So you have a choice. I'm just overviewing the website right now, but as far as how to grab jQuery UI, you have a choice between downloading or CDN link. Do we take the default version? Uh, so if you want to, okay, so let me show you the website and then I'll show you how to get it. So what is available from jQuery UI? Well, there are four types of UIs that are available, interaction, widgets, effects, What is going on with the software? Is it the World Championship? It's Copa America with sort of like this um, exhibition um, with the South American teams playing up in North America so that we can get South American teams. But I can't because they're playing in San Jose the day before this time. So yeah, yeah, next time. Next time. So anyway, if you're into soccer or whatever, you can just you know maybe create a list of the players and then your website could provide a functionality to rank your top players or something like that. And so here is the home part. You, you see this little light here? If you click here, it's going to show you the source. So it gives you a complete standalone example that you can copy and paste on your local machine and then create this interaction. Um, and it's a CSS and, I'm sorry, HTML and uh, JavaScript. And uh, as you can see here, the part that is JavaScript is extremely simple. You have 
jQuery Getty, the documentary. Um, so then the process is always the same. You select the element by the ID. So in this case, the you have a URL with ID of sortable, and then you select this element by the ID, and then you apply a jQuery UI method, and that's it. Okay, so it's extremely simple, and this allows you to create, for example, a sortable which uh, interaction here. What you need to do though is you need to follow the structure of the HTML. So if it tells you you need to have a URL with list items inside for this particular widget or interaction, then that's what you have to do. You can't make those, um, you know, something else. Okay, so follow their structure and then apply the method that is indicated here, for example, sortable or disable selection, and then it's going to create the widget for you. And the examples are going to link to slash slash, so that's not a real link. And therefore, you need to make this change here and then include the appropriate CSS and JavaScript files from the CDN. But that's the process. Um, and even you can include the themes from the CDN, which is very helpful. So I'll show you this. Uh, later. Okay, so that's one example of an interaction. Here is an example of a widget. So this is a fairly popular one, the accordion. So if you ever wanted to create this kind of effect on your page, all you have to do is create the structure. So it's a diff with the idea of accordion. And then inside, the name of the section is in H3. And then in the section, you have a div containing a paragraph, which is the content. And then you just, in the script tag, you apply dot accordion method to the accordion element, and you're done. So that's, again, super easy, right? And uh, for example, tabs, single commentary with multiple panels. You can put images here. You know, once you're inside the tab, you can do whatever you want. So here is an example of the source code. So we are told that the tabs should be put in a div. And in the div, we're going to have a, an ordered list. And then list items are going to represent the tabs. Did you intend to be sharing your screen right now? Yeah. Oh, you just died. It's just you. Thank you for telling me. That's, uh, I only just realized. I'm sorry. Thank you. Well, it just died, so I didn't realize it was not showing. OK, thank you for that. Okay. So hopefully that didn't happen long ago. All right, so you have a div with tab 1, tab 2, and tab 3. And then in the tab, you have a paragraph with a text. Here is the title of the tab and then text. Okay, and then you can look through these. There is a progress bar. I guess you can do it from here, but a progress bar. Um, let's see what else. Date picker, autocomplete. So, for example, if you're on your site and you want to search for a cert certain item, then it's going to auto-complete for you. So how is this done? Well, you actually have to create an array of the search terms that you want to support. So that's how this works. But again, the example is very easy to replicate. So you have a div with the idea of UI widget, and label tags. Input ID tag. So this is what we are selecting, the ID of the input field, right? And then you apply autocomplete to the tags element, and you tell it the name of the source, as a, you know, pass it in as an argument, which is available tags. And so if I type something starting with A, it's going to show from this list 
what is available. So you could change the list for something else, right? Um, whatever makes sense for your particular website. <coughs> Tooltip. There are also effects. So a lot of these effects you can do without jQuery UI. One that you for sure need to have jQuery UI is if you wanted to create a animation that uses color because remember we learned the animate method only works with numeric values right so we learned that you can change the width to the height of the div for example the size of the font but they are numeric but if you use the jQuery UI animate then you can for example change the color of the the color is a hex so it allows you to change color as well let me just close so it's a lot of it. Let's say you wanted to download. I mean, it is an option. It's not going to be the option that I, I choose. But if you chose to do a download, um, then here is the process. And actually, we are going to do one download, download just so we can look and see the structure of the file. So please go to the Download Builder, which is the second tab. Which version do you like? So I was about to go over this. So I'm sure. Okay, so in the download builder, there are several versions. And generally, the one you want to use is the stable version. So it's selected by default, it's the stable for jQuery 1.6 plus. Normally, unless you're normally you don't want to use an RC candidate, such as the next version for production. So you can download this maybe separately to play with it so you can learn what is new there. However, for production, you normally want the stable build. So we're going to select the stable build version. And then, as you can see, uh, normally you probably won't be using all of the available components, just a subset of them. So what you could do is you could select all. By default, everything is selected. And if that's not what you want, you can unselect all and then custom pick what you actually want. Uh, if you're downloading jQuery UI from here, you need to know that you have to have the UI core tag selected, so uh, checkbox selected. So this is always required because the other components depend on the jQuery uh, UI core. So always select uh, UI core, and then after that, let's say we want to select the accordion and the tab, right? Can I simply just uh, select all of them so we can have You can, but if you do that, even though it might sound like it's really simple, when you have to edit the file, it's going to be more cumbersome. Oh. So it's a bit of a trade-off. Make it simple, so select less. Because otherwise, you're going to have all this code to clean up. Okay. So it's an option. You certainly could. Okay. So this is not the option. Yeah, so you can try it right now. You don't have to just watch me, right? I hope you're actually doing this mm -hmm. along. If you want to try the all to select all these. Machine, you know. I'm sorry? I mean, because it's not my machine. Yeah, I, I mean. I don't know because. It's, yeah, really it's, I, that's not necessarily the consideration. It's just there will be, when you have to actually go in, you have to clean up all the code that's there, and this, you see that it's just Otherwise, a lot of work for you. Right. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, we also can select a theme. And so if you go under the theme here at the bottom, there are different theme options. And I'm going to select, I don't know, the eggplant. So just select the theme. And then it's going to apply this theme to your widget, to your selection, to your component selection. And then after that, we are ready to download. 
So today you just select your I4, nothing else, right? Mm -hmm. No, I also selected the uh, accordion and tab widgets. Oh, accordion tab widgets, right. And then you get your zip file, so save it somewhere. So what does CSS go to? Um, I guess it, I guess it's it. like a more advanced feature for customizing the theme further. You don't need to worry about it at this point. For sure. And then it's a zip file, so we're going to extract all and unzip. And here is the content. <clears throat> So let's go ahead and open the index.html in brackets. So, as you can see here, even now there is a little bit of cleanup to do, but essentially this is the eggplant color of the theme I selected, and now we already have the accordion and the tabs widget available to us. So that's an easy way to get started, and you have the code here. And you still have to do some cleanup. Most likely scenario I imagine is that you're going to download the widgets. Again, you can do this differently, but download, select the widgets that you want to work with, download them, and then um, you can import them in your own website. So that's one way you can do it. Or the other way is if you have the CDN, which we're about to do next, then you can copy the view source from the site and then integrate this into your page. All right, let's look at the HTML. What else is here? So here it's, it's commented out, this is the accordion. And we have a div with the idea of accordion. And uh, it's telling us the structure. So it's H3s with divs. And so this is where you can just use the structure and they make your own accordion with some other content, right? So essentially, the structure is in place, you just have to replace the content. So like, cat one, cat two, and cat three. Your old tabby, email, and so forth. You get the idea. It was already there. So the only thing you'd need to add would be the your custom content. Oh. And then here is the tabs. Well, I can take a look in a second. All right. So there are some frameworks, if you, uh, sorry, some icons you might want to use. Generally, I just delete those, but they're available for you in the color of the theme you selected. So I'll just delete those. And again, you could use this if you so decided. And let me make sure I don't. Okay, so if you had not, Make sure, I think I might have deleted. If you had included all, then this file would be 10 times as long, and then you'd have to do a lot more cleanup. Uh, right. 
why we do it. Looks like I didn't delete any extra drips. Okay, and so here are the um, JavaScript lines, jQuery lines. So if you downloaded it, then the download includes the jQuery in the external folder, so it's there. And then jQuery UI, the JS, that's the jQuery library file. And then you have the accordion, elements dot accordion and then applies the accordion and the tabs oops um, I guess I did it to the tab here dot tabs and applies the tab and that's pretty much it so if I comment this out accordion is now going to just have the structure that we have described in HTML but it doesn't yeah. have applied to it the accordion And so what other, what other files are here? Well, um, you do need to include the CSS file. So there's the jQuery.css, and it's huge. And there are the jQuery UI. Um, minimize versions, because as we have discussed already, if you're going to upload this content, you'd want to include the minimized versions. Right. Minify. Minimize and minify. Are those different things? Well, minify is the what, what we call the it. Spaces. We're removing the space, but it's also minimized, I guess. I guess minify is the proper word. It's yeah, as right. compressed as it can be, right? Right. Okay, so now again we have our two widgets, and let's uh, let's go ahead and make the change to include a CDN rather than the downloaded files. Or in fact, um, let's make another version of the project. So here is what we'll do. We're going to create another folder. You can name it version one. It will be the same except using all CDNs. So let's say I want to have the accordion. I haven't downloaded anything, so my first step would be to go to the accordion, view the source, and then select the example, which will give me the basic HTML structure I need. And then open the right folder. And then create a new HTML file and save as jQuery UI from CDN, or you can name something else. Okay, and now I have my structure here, and I'm running this, and of course, I don't expect it to work. But why is it not work going to work? Why is this working? Actually, I think it's, it's working because it did not. The preview maybe or something. But. Yeah, uh, yeah. Somehow it's reaching to the first. <laughs> right. <coughs> it's reaching to the somehow to the code. Oh, uh, let's see. That's scribbling something ahead. No, that's cached somewhere. That should not work, right? Um, okay, so we're in the temp. All I have is this file, so that should not work. Let's see. I think it's probably a, I'm going to guess it's a caching issue, but let me see what happens here. So the, the final uh, website is like a mega uh, business, more yeah, business, uh, business. And the sale and count and make some, make some 
Kyle and Josh be right. doing one line? Yes. Okay, come on. Would you recommend this be a, a business with a grid of products or a business with like a singular service? I have given you freedom to choose what interests you and work with that. Um, as long as you're applying the functions. The functions. Okay, well, anyway, I don't know what's uh, here. It is in Firefox, and it, it should not apply. So I think brackets cached something probably somewhere. Okay, so if we just copy it, then we have this is what I would have expected to see. And now what we need to do is um, maybe try one more time. Brackets is doing something weird here. It's not anyway. All right. So then, we, what we would like to do is the three include files. We need to grab them from a CDN, and there are three of them. There is the CSS jQuery Y CSS, the jQuery library, and the jQuery Y. Okay. So three, three files, and then we're going to, for example, the Google host of libraries. Here it is. Uh, type jQuery. Okay, so here is jQuery. So I, I'm going to grab jQuery first. We do have to pay a little bit of attention. Uh, and so jQuery is going to go here. And again, the order matters because uh, jQuery. Um, actually, it has the script tag, so I'll just delete what was there and replace it. But jQuery has to come before jQuery UI. Uh, and the next one, then I'll go to the jQuery UI. Are you all doing this with me? I hope you are. Well, not I. No. Do we need to take a break to catch up? Okay. No. Yes. All right. But they have recording anyway, right? I'm sorry? Yeah, recording. Right? We have class recording, right? Yeah, I want you to call with me and let me add two more files and then I'll stop. I'll take a pause here, look around, and you can catch up. Okay, so we need two more files, and then for those files, we're going to continue scrolling. I guess, um, just to point out here, there is also another library that's called jQuery Mobile, which also sits on top of jQuery, and it's very useful if you want to create mobile websites. We talk about it in Web 130. Uh, in more details. Um, all right, so jQuery Y and the snippet, it requires you to grab this, the CSS and the script. So I'm copying the jQuery Y snippet and then paste it in the code. So I'm going to delete the existing one. Actually, delete this as well because I don't. Know this is okay. This says goes before the script, so I'm moving the link to CSS up here, and then I have included jQuery and jQuery UI. So what is from that? Well, there is a, some kind of caching issue with um, brackets, which is why, let me look at it from here. This is also cached. No, it's, I think if it sees the, something is causing,
brackets didn't update, were they now? Yeah, brackets is clearly not updating, but it, at some point it should. It was uh, what nicely before you replace the scripts. I'm sorry? It was working then before you replace the scripts. Well, it wasn't exactly working. It was doing that, which is some kind of partial cache. Yeah. So um, let's see here. Okay, so clear browsing data, I think, is what we need to do here. 